looking at English common law. They were looking at the practices of the parliament. And they borrowed language from them. This was considered a higher standard. When George Mason said maladministration, James Madison got up and said no. Maladministration, that means the president of the United States will be owned, owned by the House of Representatives which is what the House of Representatives is saying today to the Democrats in this committee. We issue a subpoena, you damn well better abide by it. We want documents, you damn well better give it to us. We don't care about separation of power. We don't care about checks and balances. We're the House of Representatives, and we Democrats, we control it. This doesn't matter. Separation of powers doesn't matter. Well, it damn well does matter. Now, the President of the United States is not committed high crimes and misdemeanors of any sort. Here's the testimony from witnesses who are really not witnesses to anything and one witness who is a witness to something. Let's take a look at the testimony of the hit Democrat witnesses. Cut two. Go. I had a trip scheduled to visit President Zelensky in Ukraine on September 5th this year. And the day before, or a couple days before, I had heard that the president was considering or was withholding some of his military support, which, by the way, he's provided the legal defensive weaponry that Obama didn't provide, so he's already provided this in the past. But anyway, I put in a request to talk to the president, and he called me back on the following day on August 31st. And I was trying to convince the president in that phone call to give me the authority a few days later to save the, the support on his way. And I'm trying to talk the president into it. Um, once again, the president was incredibly consistent. Said, "Ron, I mean, you know, we talk, you, know, you know how corrupt a place this is. You know, it's so he, he made that point, and then he really hammered on the the lack of European support. He talked about Angela Merkel. You know, Ron, I asked Angela, you know, why don't you fund these things? And he says, you know, Angela tells me because because you guys will. But Ron, we're schmucks. We're schmucks. So that was his. That was the reason he gave me. I then brought up." This rumor I heard that was, is there something in the works? Is there, I mean, does Zelensky have to do something or does Ukraine have to show you something in order for this support to be released? And that is where he made the adamant, vehement, angry denial. And I, again, I, I described it as excellently deleted. But no way. No, no, I, I would never do that. Who told you that? Next, we have former Ambassador Yuri Ivanovich, who was very upset as an Obama holder at the President of the United States actually would dare to choose somebody else to replace him. So she was hostile. So first we have Ron Johnson. No offense, he says. Now Marie Ivanovich, I would call her a hostile opinion witness. Go. Madam Ambassador, as, as you said here before us, very simply and directly, do you have any information regarding the President of the United States accepting any bribes? No. Do you have any information regarding any criminal activity that the President of the United States has been involved with at all? Yeah. We have then two other witnesses, Ambassador Volker and Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison served on the National Security Council. Uh, their testimony on whether or not the President effectively uh, committed an impeachable offense. Go. I wanted to start with a July 25th call between President Trump and President Zelensky. Mr. Morrison, you were on that call, and there was no mention of withholding aid on the call, correct? That's correct, absolutely. And there was no quid pro quo, correct? Correct. No bribery? Correct. No extortion? Correct. And Ambassador Volter, Volker, I presume you got a readout of the call, is that correct? A very terse readout, but yes. In this tertiary readout of the call, Ambassador, from the U.S. participants, was there any reference to withholding aid? No, there was not. Any reference to bribery? No, there was not. Any reference to quid pro quo? No, there was not. Any reference to extortion? No, there was not. And I presume you also got feedback from your Ukrainian counterparts as to how the call went. Did they mention the withholding of aid? No, they did not. Did they mention any quid pro quo? No, they did not. And did they mention any bribery? No, they did not. And in fact, the day after the call, you met with President Zelensky. This would be on July 26th. That's correct. And in that meeting, he made no mention of quid pro quo. No. He made no mention of withholding the aid. No. He made no mention of bribery. No. So the fact is that Ukrainians were not even aware of this hold on aid. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, the next witness is actually a direct witness, Ambassador Sama. What did he have to say? Go. Ambassador. 
for winded abatement, as I testified previously, <coughs> with regard to a quest, requested White House call, White House meeting, the answer is yes, that there needed to be a public statement from President Zelensky. When the chairman asked you about the security assistance dollars, you said there needed to be a public announcement from Zelensky. So I'm asking you a simple question. When did that happen? Never did. Never did. They got the call July 25th. They got the meeting, not in the White House, but in New York on September 25th. They got the money on September 11th. When did the meeting happen again? Never did. You don't know who was in the meeting? Which meeting were you referring to? The meeting that never happened. Who was in it? <laughs> you know how, you, you, you know how Zelensky, you know how Zelensky announced it? Did he tweet it? Did he do a press statement? Did he do a press conference? You know how that happened? I mean, you, you got all three of them wrong. They get the call, they get the meeting, they get the money. It's not two plus two, it's 0 for three. Now, next, more from a direct witness, Sondland, as he's questioned by Rasta. Go. Tell me if there's anything sinister or nefarious in any of this. A vanilla request about corruption, a call to say I'm on my way to Ukraine, a five minute call you didn't remember is significant, but the primary purpose was to discuss a rapper, a call, that you made where the president said, I want nothing, I want no quid pro quo, I want Zelensky to do the right thing, I want him to do what he ran on, and him telling you to go tell Congress the truth. Anything sinister or nefarious about any of that? Not the way you present. Okay, and that is the truth, as you presented it, correct? Correct. All right, why that's important, Ambassador Sondland, is because none of that is hearsay, none of that is speculation, none of that is opinion, that is direct evidence. Uh, and ultimately, that is what, if this proceeds to the Senate, they're going to care about. Unlike this proceeding, which has been based on largely speculation and presumption and opinion, this is direct testimony and direct evidence. Every witness, even the witnesses that didn't witness anything, every single one of them has basically said no impeachable offense. You have to read the impeachment clause out of the Constitution to try to impeach this president. And a lot more. We'll be right back. Welcome back, America, to this special edition of Life, Liberty, and Levin, the Democrats up Schiff's Creek. The impeachment clause has nothing to do with the federal criminal code. As a matter of fact, 